There are two types of chemical equations. <clears throat> Some of them are 100% to the right, <clears throat> which we call them one-way reaction. In some cases, we are dealing with <clears throat> chemical reactions, which are equilibrium reactions. We show equilibrium with double arrows and the reaction goes to both sides. That means when I react SO2 and these are SO2 molecules with O2, the red molecules are O2, they react together to form some SO3, and you see SO3 here. And then as you have buildup of SO3 molecules, they collide together, and <clears throat> some of the SO3s go back to SO2 and O2. That means you never have 100% SO3 as the product, but you end up having a mixture of SO3 and the starting material, which are O2 and SO2. So these reactions are a pain because we want to make product, but we end up having a mixture of reactants and products. The reaction works from both ways as well. In other words, if we have a mixture of, starting with mixture of SO3, only SO3, after a while, these are going to collide together and form a mixture of SO2 and O2 and some unreacted SO3. So we are interested to make product only not a mixture of reactants and products. <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> We are studying these reactions to see what we can do to force the equilibrium goes all the way to the right. What can we do to make only SO3, no unreacted SO2 and O2? That's the purpose of the studies that we are going to do on this part of the chapter. So this is graphic representation of the same thing. The reactants are SO2 and O2, you run the reaction, you get some product, but there's also unreacted starting material. This is typical equilibrium reactions. In this case, you see most of the reactants are consumed. This is much larger than unreacted starting material, but an equilibrium could be even less product. And more reactant, look at this reaction. Where we are starting with C, COCl2, we are hoping to make Cl2 and O2 only. I'm sorry, we are hoping to make Cl2 and CO only, but most of the starting material are staying and reacted. Very small amount of products are formed. So this is even more of a pain because we would like this reaction to go 100% to products and we don't wanna have any unreacted starting material. So <clears throat> the scientist who studied these equilibrium reactions, his name is Le Chatelier, French chemist. And when he studied these reaction, he came up with an understanding which can help us to push a reaction toward more completion, to push an equilibrium reaction toward more completion and have more product rather than unreacted starting material. So he says, if you understand the psychology of reactions at equilibrium, we can do something to shift the equilibrium, to make the equilibrium to go toward right to make more product. And the way he explains the psychology of a chemical reaction at equilibrium is that he says, equilibrium reactions behave like a five-year-old brat. You know how if you are studying 
for your exam and your little brat is making too much noise and is playing video games loudly, you say, honey, would you be quiet? I'm trying to focus on my studies and I, ha I have an exam to do. So you may even make it louder. You may even make more noise to distract you, to attract your attention. Or you may be sitting and studying and you say, honey, it's too hot here. Would you shut the door, please? He may do exactly the opposite and open the windows as well because he wants your attention. So it's reverse psychology. It means that if you want him to actually shut the door, what would you do? You say, honey, would you open all the doors? Oh, he's going to shut the door. Or you wanna say, honey, would you please sing loudly and increase the volume of your TV and let's say video game? He may decrease it and he may do the opposite. So that's how equilibrium reactions are behaving. This is the principle, the Southeast principle. He says, when a reaction is at equilibrium, if we make any condition, if we make any changes, the equilibrium is going to shift to a direction to reverse the changes, to counteract the changes. I'm going to give you an example. So let's take a look at reaction of hydrogen with fluorine. So let me give you this example. If you react hydrogen gas with O2, the reaction is going to make water. And in order to balance the equation, you need two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen to make water. Do you see this reaction? It's one way reaction. It's 100% completion. It goes all the way to the right. That means if you have a stoichiometric mixture of this, so if you have two moles of hydrogen and you have one mole of oxygen, the reaction goes 100% to formation of water and you have no one reacted the starting material. There is no oxygen left. There is no hydrogen left. But when we react hydrogen with fluorine instead of oxygen, do you see the reaction is an equilibrium? That means it never goes 100% to the product. So if we want to make hydrofluoric acid, which is an acid which is actually used for etching glasses, if we want to make hydrofluoric acid, we want to force this reaction to make maximum amount of HF, maybe 100% HF, and consume all the stoichiometric amount of hydrogen and fluorine. That means one mole, you start with one mole of hydrogen, one mole of F2, you should be able to make, or we try to make two moles of HF, no more unreacted F2 and H2. So, guys, let's see what we can do. This is the reaction. We have mixed fluorine and hydrogen. There is some HF form. And then once we have certain amount of buildup of concentration of HF, then the molecules of HF are colliding together and they go back, they break down to fluorine and H2. So at the beginning reaction goes to the right at certain buildup of concentration of HF. HF molecules are colliding together, reaction goes to back. So at a point you come to equilibrium. What is point of equilibrium? That means number of hydrogen fluoride, number of product form are equal to number of molecules of HF which are going back. That means concentration of HF is fixed concentration of F2 is fixed, concentration of H2 is fixed. At the point of equilibrium, all concentrations are fixed now. Why the rate that reaction is going forward, and I'm going to show this as forward. 
that means going reactant to product, and the rate of reverse reaction are equal together. That means concentration are fixed. We don't like that. We don't like to have mixture of three compounds. That's not good for us. We have to separate them. It's very costly. So what I'm going to do, ask you a question. I make a prediction. Guys, let's take a look at the reaction which has reached to equilibrium concentration of HF, F2 and H2 are fixed. Now, what happens if I add hydrogen gas? The mixture which has got these three components, H2, F2, HF, I'm going to add hydrogen gas. So let's see if we can predict using the reverse psychology of Le Chatelier. Le Chatelier says, what you have done, you have increased the concentration of hydrogen because you added hydrogen. What would equilibrium do? Equilibrium is going to do the reverse. What is reverse of increasing hydrogen concentration? The reverse of this is consuming hydrogen to reduce the concentration of hydrogen. Which direction reaction have to go to consume hydrogen. Well, look at this reaction. The reaction goes forward. Hydrogen is consumed by reacting with F2 to make HF. So equilibrium says, aha, uh -huh, you increase the hydrogen. I don't like it. I'm going to decrease the concentration of hydrogen. That means I'm going to shift toward consumption, consumptions of hydrogen. So I'm going to go to forward. And what happens when reaction goes forward? Forward means going from left to right. That means you will make more HF and less F2 is going to be in equilibrium Y, F2 must react with H2 to make HF. So does this make sense? Do you have any question? Anybody? <laughs> 